I'm going to talk about triggers. Triggers are small programs that uh, execute upon certain events on a database, such as an insert or delete or updation in a, in a table. So to illustrate triggers and their capabilities, we're going to create a few tables. First, I'm going to create a table called customer with a customer ID, the last name of the customer, this interpret as any personal information, and then the phone number. So I'm going to create this table. Then I'm going to create a table for transactions. The first transaction, well, there's going to be an ID that's going to auto increment. It's going to be the primary key. There's going to be a customer ID, which should match the customer's table customer ID. There's going to be an amount. There's going to be a Boolean here that says is purchased. That will be true if the transaction was a purchase. False if it was something else, like a return or a credit. There will be an order ID if there's an order attached to the transaction. And an order date, which is going to be a timestamp, and the default is going to be the current time. Now, in this table, I'm going to have some referential integrity. I'm going to create a foreign key customer ID, uh, so this customer ID, and it'll reference the customer ID on this table. Okay? As you might have seen in the video about foreign keys, uh, we could say so that if you delete a customer, then all the customer's transactions are deleted. However, that might not be the desire um, that may not be the desired effect, and with triggers, we're going to control what the effect is. But for now, we do want the referential integrity. We don't want to delete any transactions that have an active customer. We don't want to have delete any customers that have a, an active transaction. All right. So, and then I'm going to create. I'm going to create this table, and then I'm going to create a customer history table. Basically, this is whenever a customer I delete a customer because you know, he or she stopped their subscription or for whatever reason, I want to get a little history that's going to have an ID and then it has, it's going to tell me the deleted customer, how many transactions did he or she make and what was the total amount? Why? Well, because if a lot of customers are leaving, I want to know how many transactions they had and what was the amount. So that way I can know if, you know, customers leaving is really impacting my business or not. So I'm going to create this table as well. So just so you see the three tables, I can select from customers. It's customer, last name, phone. From transactions, it's going to be uh, transact ID, customer ID, amount, is purchase, order ID, and order date, and the customer history, and they're all empty. Now, I'm going to insert a few customers here, SG1, 2, 3, and 4, William, Sampras, Rios, and, and Navratilova. I'm going to insert them there, and then uh, I'm going to also, let's say that to, when they sign up with me, they have to pay $100, okay? So I'm going to insert transactions for all of them for $100. And then let's say they have some, you know, they, they have some activity with me, so I'm going to insert a few other transactions. Now, let's see what the tables look like now. The customer table has SG1, 2, 3, and 4, and the transaction table has all the $100 transactions and then all the other transactions. And you can see some are negative numbers in the amount and that makes them false. That's not a purchase because it's an amount that came from my company to the client. And positive transactions here are actual purchases. Now, triggers before. I can create a trigger, basically tell the database that before something happens, I want a little program to execute. and that is done this way. So what I'm going to do is this flag, it's usually going to be false if, it, if the number is negative and it's going to be true if the number is positive. I don't want to set it every time I insert a row. This can easily be automated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a trigger, basically one of these little programs. I'm going to give the name of the trigger, in this case purchase flag, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to check what this number. And based on this number, I'm going to update this flag. And it's going to be before I insert any record on the table transaction. So before insert on transaction, the table transaction, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, for each row inserted, in this case just one, but for each row inserted, I'm going to create a little program that goes between begin and the end semicolon keywords. So 
what I'm going to do when I insert, just before I insert on transaction, the record that's being inserted uh, in the database is called new. It has a reference here, new. I can just use this name. This refers to the record that it's going to be inserted. Okay. What I'm going to do is the new record dot is purchase. I'm going to do, I'm going to set it to true or false depending on whether it's greater or equal to zero. So if the new record amount is greater or equal than zero, then this is going to be true. And then the new records is purchase field then will become true. If the new record inserted, the amount is less than zero, then this statement is going to be false. And new dot is purchase, basically this field in the new record is going to be false. So this is going to be my trigger. I will execute it, create the trigger. I've created the trigger. I'm going to delete some windows just for clarity here. And then what happens is, let's look at what transaction looks like. These are all my transactions. So now, let's insert a couple of transactions here. For SG4, we're going to insert a transaction for uh, 1,345 and one transaction for negative 900. So we're going to insert this. And these transactions aren't here. This is the last transaction. So I'm going to run this. And then I'm going to select from transaction again and see what it looks like. These are my, my 100s, all my transactions, and look at the last two. SG4, 1,345, true, and SG4, minus 900, false. And as you can see here, the insert into transaction, nowhere I specified what the purchase ID should be, what the purchase, what the is purchase field should be. What happens is that when, before it inserted this record, SG4, 900, and this uh, order ID, before it inserted this record, it actually added a new value for the for the field is purchased, which is not specified, right? Here, according to the trigger, it added whether it was false or true, depending on whether it was greater or less than zero. So that is one trigger. It's before an insert. Now, still, if we look at the history, there's nothing on the history that's empty. So now let's assume we want to delete a customer. We want to delete customer SG1, OK? We want to put their data in the history table, right? In this history table. So the first thing that I need to do first is find out how many transactions, right? So select count from the table transactions. So how many transactions? And what was the total amount of these transactions from transactions where customer ID is SG2? I'm sorry. Let's delete SG2 here. So in order to do that, OK, I'm going to run this select. What this select does is it selects this column and this column and puts it into these two variables, and at NT and at amount. So I'm going to select these two, these two columns. Now, this select doesn't produce any results because what I'm selecting it, I'm selecting it into variables, not to the screen. If I want to print this to the screen, if I want to print this to the screen, I can do this. And you can see this, you know, SG2 had three transactions and a total of $357. And then once I do that, I'm going to insert this into the customer history, right? And then I'm going to delete, delete the transactions from customer ID SG2 and then delete the customer SG2. So now I select from customer and I should not see SG2. It's only SG1, 3, and 4. And if I select from transactions, I will see that there are no transactions for SG2. And then if I select from the customer history, I have one customer that left with three transactions and this much uh, business, amount of business. <coughs> now that's a lot to do every time I want to delete a customer. So what I can do is automate this process. So now I know that it's safe to delete uh, uh, from transaction or from customer and I know that I have and I know that using the keyword cascade in the foreign key this could be taken care of automatically but the part where the history is kept cannot happen so instead I keep the referential integrity with the foreign key but the deletion process I will control via a trigger and the way I do it is like this I'll create a trigger. I'm going to call it T-Archive because I'm going to archive the transactions. 
and it's going to be before I delete a customer. So before delete a customer, for each row deleted in a customer, okay, what I will do is the following. It's the exact same procedure I did up there. I'll select how many customer, how many transactions, and what's the total amount of those transactions into two variables from the table transaction, where the customer ID, and here's another thing. If you delete, there's no new row coming in. There's only old rows. So the keyword old can be used. So where customer ID equals the old customer ID, basically the row that was going to be deleted is customer ID. So again, I'm going to select how many transactions, what's the total amount, I'm going to put that into these variables. And the condition is the customer ID has to be the row that I'm deleting's customer ID. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert into the current history the number of transaction and the amount of transaction and the values that I'm going to add are these the values stored in these variables, NT and amount, which I got from this previous select. And then I'm going to delete all the records from the table transaction where the customer ID corresponds to the customer ID that I'm deleting in the table customer. So basically I'm doing this whole process. And then deleting from customer, well, that's what I wanted to do on the first in the first place, right? So instead of using a lot of commands, I'm just going to use one delete on, just one delete on the customer table will execute this program every single time. So let's run this trigger. Let's look at the history just for kicks. We have one person, one customer deleted. Let's look at customers. We have SG1, 3, and 4. Let's look at transactions. We don't have any transactions from SG2, SG1, 3, and 4 only. So what I'm going to do now is um, let's delete a customer. So I'm going to delete, delete, whoops, from customer uh, where customer ID, let's say we delete SG3, SG3. Let's delete SG3 or SG1. Let's delete SG1. Okay, so I'm going to delete SG1, right, from customers. I delete SG1 and look what happens. If I look at the history, I have now the history of two people. This is SG1, right? Also had three transactions because everybody had pretty much three transactions uh, except for one. And then the amount this is the amount of transactions. If I look at customer, SG uh, SG1 is not there. If I look at transactions, there are no transactions for SG1. So this is another example of a of a trigger on a table taking care of stuff that happens in a different table and using variables too so you can use variables there's if statements there also, there's a whole language in, in every database engine there's a whole language to specify triggers and there's also stored procedures which are little programs and then you can reference from a trigger from someplace in the database Th those are programs that are not associated to an event like this right but there are little programs that sit down there and you can call them uh, whenever now there's one other trigger. We've only seen triggers that happen before an operation. So what happens? There are some triggers that need to happen after an operation. So for example, here, we notice that every time a customer signs up, they have to pay a fee of 100. Basically, what it means is that every time I insert a customer, I should insert a transaction for $100. So instead of doing that manually, what I'm going to have is the following. I'm going to create a trigger. I'm going to call it T withdraw because we withdraw uh, $100 from the customer. And it's going to happen after you insert a record on customer. And what's going to happen is for each row inserted, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a transaction with the customer ID, amount, and order ID. And the values for this is the customer ID is going to be the new row that I'm inserting, customer ID. The value is going to be 100, and the order is going to be 0 because that's the initial... Uh, it's not associated to, to an order ID, it's the initial payment. And that is my little trigger. I'll execute it. And now look, if I go and insert into customer SG5, last name Becker, I insert Becker. I go to my table customer, I select everything from customer, and you see that now Becker is there. And if I go into transactions, you see that the last transaction here is SG5100, it's Becker, right? And it added true because I had a trigger for that. So now you've seen how you can do triggers after some event happens on a table, and you can use the word new for things that are inserted, and 
old for things that are deleted, that are going away. Before, you can use the keyword old for deletions. And you can make reference to the actual record that you're deleting or inserting. You always use for each, even on insert, because there are some ways to, uh, of inserting multiple rows at the same time. And what happens is that every time you insert something, this will take place. This is a brief introduction to triggers.